Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Junkyard Digs and welcome to another installment of farming using abandoned equipment. There's no time at all to waste because today's the big one. We've got to get our equipment ready and get the corn in the ground. Let's get to it. <laughs> First of all, thank you all for joining us for this video, and uh, thank you for all of your interaction in all the previous videos in the series. I hope you guys have been enjoying it, because I sure as hell have. At least until today, because I drove past like 10 people planting the corn, and none of those people were me. I still don't have a tractor that even has hydraulics. <laughs> Either way, like I said, today's goal is to prep all of our equipment and then get some corn in the ground. It, we're coming down the wire. It's May 16th, which is about six days after the last day you want to plant for yields. And... I'm a few days away from being ready to put anything in the ground, so we need to get this sucker up to snuff. Bunch of points that need grease, we need to do an oil change because supposedly that's still it's breaking oil from when it was rebuilt. I need to fill the transmission, it's like completely empty. We still don't have a working hydraulic system. Uh, we need to just do a general tune up and a bunch of maintenance to make sure this thing can go balls out in the field and tow stuff that's probably way too big for it. But survive. After that we need to prep our cultivator and disc, those both need some oiling, uh, it's probably some uh, teeth taken off the cultivator, maybe straighten the disc out so that this can pull it. And then we've got a bunch of grease to put into our planter and prep that thing, get it all set up so that we can put seed in the ground. So, without further ado, let's dive into this because we have a shitload of work to do. And once again, the rains are coming. We got to get the corn in. To facilitate the maintenance we have today, I popped on eBay and got ourselves one of this. This being a brand new oil gauge and a brand new a brand new temp gauge. If this thing's gonna be out there revving its nuts off in the field, I wanna make sure that temp and oil are good to go. Farm life is a hard life. All right, there's that. And there's that. Huh, an engine. Well, that was freaking easy. Man, this thing was really like completely restored before it was parked outside. All right, here is our old gauge. And as you can tell, it's literally always reading 150 degrees and that ain't right. These are genuine farmal uh, gauges, but I gotta wonder if this one's not because this just says cold run hot. There you go. That wasn't so hard. That scared me. I thought I'd have to get the big pliers. Ooh. Great, looks like I pissed myself. Restored. Surprised they package that with twists in it. Usually you don't want to kink these lines at all. You want them to stay as straight as possible. All right, let's see how well I can do this without dumping every single ounce of coolant out of the engine. Not well. Sweet, there we go, new temp gauge. All right, now for the oil gauge. Now this gauge did show a little movement, but just like the other one, it's been sitting outside for 20 something years, it's all rusted up and it's not reading accurately. So we'll get the new one in. And just like the other one, the new one doesn't have actual numbers. <laughs> it's, it's just generalizations of Yes, pressure. Basically, I just want to make sure that this thing has proper oil pressure and see if I need to be bumping the viscosity up while we're doing an oil change. Get some Teflon tape on there, and away we go. All right, let's fire this sucker up and see if our gauges move, and uh, we're gonna do it uncorked, because why not? Performance. 
Well, as you can tell, at operating RPM, everything's just fine for pressure. It is a little low, down low, so I might just throw some Lucas in there. Try to thicken up the new SAE30 that we'll be putting in alongside some zinc. This is a flat tap and engine just like all the cars we work on. So we're going to put zinc in the oil so we don't just kill this thing immediately. Either way, it looks like we got ourselves a working oil gauge. So we can put our hood back on and move on to getting this tank flushed out. Well, we got the hood off. I'm going to go ahead and grease a couple zerts before I put the hood on and just cover them back up to where I can't access them. I believe there's one right here. Yes. Haha. -ha. There is a grease zerk for the water pump, which is good because that thing is screaming. Oh, and there's one on the fan too. Cool. This grease gun literally cost me more than this tractor did. Good to go. All right, it is time now to fill our transmission and I literally do not have a uh, ratchet or a breaker bar or anything here with this size of the one inch drive. So I'm actually having to rely on the channel lock 460 big ass pliers. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. All right, let's fill it up. There. No. Uh. Well, I only spilled most of it, but either way, we're getting some gear oil in this transmission finally. I imagine it probably takes all of this bucket. Alright, next up, it's time to finally get this tank flushed out. I'm gonna give it the old uh, pressure washer method, get all that rust flaking out so that this thing can finally properly breathe. Should only be like a quarter gallon in there. All right, so let's get a look at what we're dealing with here. As you can tell, it's pretty nasty around that pickup especially. This has had gas in it for a month or so, ever since we got it going. So it should have broken up some rust. It does look better already, but all that loose stuff right there is our problem. It's just gonna keep plugging that pickup. So I'm gonna get the pressure washer in there and spray this out. Honestly, overall, this is a really good tank for having sat outside for 20 years. See if this little bastard can do it. Get all the loose shit out, that's all I care about. One final flush and it's time to clean our sediment bowl, change the oil, and hit the field. This is really happening. I'm really gonna be turning dirt today on my own land without Angus, just generally clueless. I'm sure this will go fine. Just because it's abandoned doesn't mean it has to look like crap. I mean, it's not abandoned anymore, it was. It's still, it, it's fine. up better than I thought it would. What do you say old girl? Put the fuel sediment bowl on, put some gas in the tank, and go turn some dirt. I think it's finally time. looks great today so I don't know if there's some air in the line that seeped out overnight or what uh, water temperature gauge does not work at all I ran this around yesterday I actually used it to move some cards and stuff uh, to see if that would come up and it never did so I bought a new one we're gonna swap those out again but I'm gonna put the sediment bowl on do an oil change we'll get this some bitch ready to go in the field let's do it all right sediment bowls on fill this sucker up I almost forgot about the air filter. Ooh, that's, <laughs> ooh, yummy. Well, let's fix that. What do we even do with this? All right, everything's cleaned out. There's a bunch of shit in there. You got some fresh oil in it. Get that up in there, tighten her down, and this is done. 
Then it's time for the oil change, and then we're ready for the field. The concerning part is this was like finger tight, but it's okay. Let's see how bad we are. Yeah, that doesn't look like freshly rebuilt engine oil to me. Hmm, interesting. Doesn't smell like it either. Granted, it did sit for a long time, but we've seen a lot of stuff that sat for a very long time and still had clean oil in it. I could be totally wrong though, who knows? It doesn't matter. All that matters is we get this sucker running and get the damn corn in. Where's the new filter? So what I'm about to do and say might upset the old timers a little bit. I know they're really finicky on these old tractors about uh, what oil to use. And if you go on any forum anywhere, even in the car community, everyone's just arguing about oil. Oil is oil. It all comes from the same damn hole in the ground. There is a difference between uh, normal and synthetic, but that's for a different day. As far as we are concerned, oil is oil. Except for oil today versus oil that was existing back when these were around. The big thing is the zinc content is completely missing from today's oil. It's there is no zinc. Reason being, after the advent of catalytic converters, they had to take zinc out of oil because it was bad for the uh, catalysts inside the catalytic converters was plugging them up. Uh, on top of that, all manufacturers went to roller camshaft engines, so they didn't have to have zinc to support the use of catalytic converters. So, if you have an old car, or in this case an old tractor that has a flat type of camshaft, we're gonna have to put some zinc in the oil. We're gonna throw two of these in there, and that will be plenty of zinc in this engine. Uh, a little bit more than what would have came uh, in oil back in the day as far as parts per million, but for about eight bucks We can confidently say that we're not going to kill this motor and then have to get all the metal fragments out of our engine Tell you what I really sure hope this is the oil fill say the water that was in the sediment bowl just got to the carburetor. Oops. Is that just water? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. I mean, clearly this, this doesn't look good, but it was still running, so we were like, wow, you can run this thing on anything. Oh yeah, you can see a separation of water though. <laughs> we'll just keep an eye on it. It's gonna be a thing until I, I didn't get that tank very dry. I should have let it sat like overnight, but we don't have overnight, we gotta get the damn corn in. It's like a shitty lava lamp of disappointment. <laughs> All right, this son of a gun is officially ready for the field. Let's go hook up to the disc. We've got our hydraulic cylinder all assembled and ready in the back of our side-by-side. -side. Do note, it's not an expensive, normal farmer side-by-side, -side, but rather a Cushman that I got for 500 bucks. Let's go hook up to the disc and turn some dirt. <laughs> tank might be a problem. <laughs> well, I mean, the gas in the bowl is starting to look a bit more gas-like. Well, then that's confusing, because it sure doesn't run like it's gas, I'll tell you that much. Be gone, you foul water. Blah. Or, it's a fuel feed issue. Again, damn it. <laughs> All right. Well, I suppose that would do it. Got our cylinder all hooked up. Tractor's ready to go. Fuel thingy's cleaned off again. It's probably going to plug 17 more times, but uh, we'll deal with that when we have that problem. For now, it's time to turn some dirt, which is actually not very much dirt anymore, and mostly just sand and Pontiac parts, but that's part of it. <laughs>
Ten more steps. You barely know what you're doing. Da -de -da -de -da. We'll figure it out. How hard can it be? I just want to plant the corn. On top of the fact that it no longer runs, it doesn't go down. Your fuel bowl is just half empty, or is it full of water? No, it's not even. It's not even the water. It's literally there's rust plugging everything up again. Oh. Are you sure? Okay, this time it might be the water. Wow, that's a lot of water. It's a little better, which is sad. There we go. That's what we want. It wasn't even the screen. It was the pickup itself, which means whatever it was is still up in the tank, and it will be back. But all right, fuel's fixed. Why the hell won't this do it? You gotta push it like a man. Should have known that violence was the answer. Let's try this again. idea. If I build a standpipe on top of that little uh, intake so it's not just pulling from the bottom of the tank and it's pulling from an inch up, like everything else in the world that has a gravity tank, it won't be able to pick up the rust or the water. Alright, it's been a couple minutes. I found a random hunk of uh, copper line in the shed, drilled out our actual base with the drill, brushed everything off, slammed it in there, and soldered it up. So, now we have a standpipe. Sure enough, when I took this apart, this entire thing was full of huge chunks of rust. So apparently didn't get everything out when we flushed it, but this should fix that either way because now instead of being the lowest point of the tank, we're going to be an inch up, which means all of our water and all of our rust should avoid going into the sediment bowl. On top of that, I took the little restrictor out, which was causing all of our sediment to stack up inside this. So it should be able to fall down into the bowl. We have ourselves a high performance turbocharged sediment bowl and we should be good to go. Let's put this all back together, put it all back on the tractor, refill the tank, and try it again. All right, we're not gonna be able to use that bottom gallon or two, but that's okay because that's where all the problems float around. I'm not gonna lie, I'm pretty impressed with my own genius here on this standpipe idea. I think it's going to be a, a fix-all. Like, we won't have any more issues. We can't, it's impossible. Okay, statistically, it's not impossible. There's a chance some little piece of thing floats up, but then it'll just go right through everything because we opened it all up and it'll sit in the sediment bowl. Look at that flow. That is what we want to see. And it's actually gas this time. All right, let's go farm a field. For real this time.
that water temp gauge is actually broken, this thing just doesn't come up to 130 degrees. I think we need to straighten our discs out a little bit because it seems to be a little much for the old H. At least the back set, because they're the big bastards. Right. It really seems as if every time you have to go uphill, or a slight incline I should say, it doesn't. Astute observation, Jesse. <laughs> so right now these are completely locked out to full tilt. We'll do a little bit of this and that'll change. And it should get a lot easier to pull. Running good though. No more fuel issues. One Trial step. and error. No, no, no. This is denial and error. track was going to be really compacted but I didn't think it was going to be that compacted. It just kind of skidded the disc right across the surface. So basically on my first pass with this small of a tractor I need to break up the surface of the entire field because it hasn't been farmed in a couple years and then we can start adding more and more um, angle to those discs and get a little deeper. Once that's done we'll cultivate. <laughs> Jesse, the field is darker than it was when it started, so I'm going to call that a win. As far as the tractor goes, we have a few repairs to make. Any form of a muffler would be nice. You may or may not have immediately just ran it over with the disc. The answer was may. And uh, we need to put some significantly thicker oil in. I was, I'm pushing it because that's rain right there. And I wanted to at least get this large field done. But uh, she was coming right down to the red line as it got up the temp. So. She needs some 1540 or more. So let's go do that. And then we'll return for the forward field. And about three more passes in every which direction over this, because especially the track, because the holy shit. I didn't even didn't even touch it for any of the straights. Good morning everyone, and welcome to day two of us attempting to plant corn in this field. Last night after we shut the cameras off, I spent a couple more hours out there and did the front half of the field and just did some overlap on the back. Uh, our oil pressure is getting pretty low as you saw yesterday, so I've dumped out the uh, SAE 30 in favor for some VR1 20W50 high zinc racing oil. Yeah, I'm done messing around with this thing having low pressure. If we need to go out there and run it all day, we're going to be able to run it all day on this. Granted, when we're done hammering on it all day, tilling the field, I'll put the SAE 30 back in because when you fired it up on the 30, it was just fine, but after about 25, 30 minutes of running around and the engine itself would get hot, the oil would lose viscosity because it's now warm and we would have just terrible oil pressure, like none. So I'm not about to shell out a motor. Got some thicker oil with zinc and everything. Should be good to go. I just gotta top this off and 
we'll be ready to go out in the field once it's dry again. Because surprise, surprise, it rained two inches last night. That would have been great if it was on top of the corn. So we'll get this all buttoned up, and once it's dry enough, I'll put my farmer pants on, and we'll go till some more field and get ready for the cultivator. Oh yes, uh, as you saw, the muffler fell off yesterday. I found this laying around. This is from the Eagle. I used a piece of the old pipe. Oh, hello. I used a piece of the pipe from the old muffler and clamped her back on there, and yeah, she's muffled. All right, in typical farming fashion, I may not be dressed right, but holy shit, the atmosphere is correct. We've been running all over the place, doing a whole bunch of stuff, trying to get this week's video out, trying to keep this thing alive. It had a flat tire this morning, so we came and aired it up. I got it stuck between the trees on the way over. We had to cut a tree down, which led into us cutting four trees down, because hell, we had the chainsaw out, you know, might as well keep going. The fields may be dry enough for me to go back out and finish disking. If it's good to go, I'm just gonna turn the whole thing, get that done so we can get the cultivator on. Hopefully it's dry enough in a couple hours to cultivate. I, it, we need a nice dry surface so we can break all the clumps up and level everything, but we'll see. Problem is, it's supposed to rain like every other night this week. I need to get this damn corn in. This, this is me not even saying it ironically anymore. I need to get this damn corn in before the rain so that it gets rained on because my luck, I'm gonna get it in and then boom. That's the last rain for the summer. <laughs> to the field! Definitely a few heavy wet spots. Our oil pressure is looking a thousand times better. It's not already halfway gone or all the way to the red. I think if I take my time, I should be able to get through this all just fine. We might have to take a little more angle out of the furrows. We'll see, but let's get this bitch turned so it can dry, we can cultivate and get this corn in the ground. See you guys when it's cultivating time. Songs to pass the time in my brain. My dog died, my truck ran away, and god damn it, we're gonna leave my beer pliers. But do 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 Second try is the charm. Get this sucker up to the front yard, get it all serviced up, greased up. Totally forgot that the rakes were broken off. Uh, and then get it in the field. Now I did do a little test. I uh, dropped this thing in the ground and the tractor came to an immediate stop and died. So we've got a little work to do. Let's pop a few shovels off this thing, lighten up the load and get her out in the field. So on the list of things I don't have on the farm here, uh, right up there on top is a welder. Actually right above that is appropriate amperage service to run a welder anywhere on the world's oldest freaking property. So bitch is wired with dental floss and a silly string, I swear. Plug your phone in, the lights get dimmer. Anyway, no welder. What I do have is a drill, and it's cordless, because, you know, shitty electricity. So what we're going for here was actually an idea brought up by our cameraman. Thank you, Jesse. I'm gonna drill some holes through this, and drill some holes through that, and we're gonna stick a bolt through it all, and we're gonna put the cord in. We'll be back sometime tomorrow when this is done. Well, we didn't get the corn in, and I didn't get the cultivator out before the rain came. Tell you what, that's not a bad way to end the night right there. Enjoying a cold beer and a beautiful Iowa sunset looking out across our 
somewhat disked field. Not a bad day at all. Good morning everyone. It's been a whole nother day. I spent yesterday editing and it rained again so it's been too wet to go out in the field. I think it's dry enough. It's been a little windy but not very sunny. It's very cold. It's like 60 outside today. Uh, and we've got literally four days of rain coming on Monday. So we've got today and tomorrow to get the corn in and then we're out of time. When we last left off I was fixing the rakes on the cultivator. They are good to go. Uh, we have one last thing to fix on the tractor before we go out in the field and it is this shock. We have a, a slight upgrade here. See the thing is it's it's nice, it's bouncy, but sometimes it's a little too bouncy. You want to be able to adjust it. And obviously being a car channel there's only one answer when it comes to putting an adjustable shock on the back of your farm all age QA1. So we're going to get this switched out and then go put the corn in with speed and performance. The best handling H in the west side of Mississippi. We gotta get the corn in! There we go. Oh, the neighbors are planting. Oh, it's on now. It's a race that we are absolutely gonna lose. We have like four acres. He has like 120. <laughs> we don't stand a chance. <laughs> gotta get these race parts on this son bitch and get it in the field. Let's go. We gotta beat the pace car, the pace tractor. Ladies and gentlemen, the world's first Farmall H for the QA1 single adjustable shock. Which, mind you, oh wow, that's immediately so much better. That other shock was completely junk. So this will be actually an excellent display of how these shocks work. All right, Mo, give us some bouncing. All right, I'm gonna give you two more clicks. Okay, three more clicks, go ahead. These shocks have 18 clicks worth of adjustability. We only needed the first six because instead of a 4,000 pound car, we have a 100 pound MOOC. But either way, that is a great description of how well the q one shock adjustability works. Just like that, you can change your car from riding like a feather to riding like a sports car. Let's get this sunbitch fired up and out in the field and do some cultivating yeah. with a smooth q one performance ride. Yeah. Start. Yeah, I think it dove. to about here on the shovels. Are you serious? Well, it could be anywhere from here to about here. Oh, <laughs> okay, see that I believe. <laughs> so who really knows? I, not me. It looks different, that's for sure. It definitely pulls a lot harder. I'm honestly impressed this thing can pull that at all, but everyone doubted the old age. This son of a bitch will pull. I don't think the planters gonna be any problem at all. We didn't even take any tines off this. Oh, it's farm removed. Sweatshirt. With a sweatshirt, because it's like, 58 degrees, I'm freezing. <laughs>
It's a race! The neighbors! one little strip here but I'd say this is working I really have no idea it does look a little less clumpy than it did before and now there's more stripes in it so we cultivated I don't know <laughs> yeah time for the backfield that one's just a whole bunch of the same thing so we'll uh we'll save you all the actual work of farming keep you guys around for the entertainment in the meantime keep your stick on the ice yeah keep your tractor in the field I don't know <laughs> Everything is cultivated. Looks good enough to plant most of the field. This part down here might be a little rough. I had a hell of a time breaking through this dirt, even with the disc. Might have to hit this part again, we'll see. For now, it's finally time to go get the dang planter ready and put the corn in the ground before the rain. We've done this charade like 15 times. I just want the damn corn in the ground, man. This is the most farmer thing I've ever said in my life because I actually meant it. <laughs> So up until this point, everything's just been hooked something to the tractor, give it a lot of throttle, and drag it behind me carelessly. Now that all that's done, it's time to get this planter ready, so I've brought in my cousin Ben, who still to this day farms with old equipment. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is taking me back a little bit. Basically right now, uh, Caleb and Landon are switching everything over from beans to corn on our bottom plate here. Ben's looking at words and numbers, and I'm going to go get the grease gun, because <laughs> that I know how to do. <laughs> So, basically, what we got going on here is a big set of all these chains. This is a ground-driven planter, actually. Mostly all planters are ground-driven, if I'm not mistaken. These big old chains spin this doohickey bar. The doohickey bar goes into a big confusing pile of chains, which Ben is working on now and trying to set our population and whatnot. It drives these chains through a second auxiliary doohickey bar, which comes back to this uh, spindle McGee and spins this little doodad for the beans and the corn by hooking up this pulley, such as that one there. The thing is, I don't have any of the hardware for that, so I might have to go get some, but that's okay, because the beer cooler's out of ice. We can justify that. The green cup is full of water. We've got some cleaning to do on the internals of this guy. Oh boy! It's gonna rob all your horsepowers. <laughs> the fun now is gonna be cleaning all those boxes out, finding all our grease points, and we should be getting closer to good to go. Plan is to have this functional tonight, planting tomorrow. Uh -oh. Won't be a John Care Diggs video if we didn't try to pull a piece of equipment with a three wheeler.
I think most of the force of moving this along the ground is trying to turn those damn, whatever those are, the fingers. That, that takes some power. Yeah. Engage that, and I, I promise the three-wheeler's not going to move it anymore. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, as I turn it, it's dropping seed on the ground. Old seed, but you're going to be okay. Yeah. Probably get a pliers in there to straighten it out. Yeah, I learned this from Angus. Nope. <laughs> Those will do it. Look at there. Let's see, it's gotta go this way. Yeah, you keep going up a little bit. Oh, right there. there you go. Body work while we're back here. Yeah. And a little more, a little more right here. Dad, she's so proud. <laughs> Sweet. All right, everything's greased up. Our next step is to get some air in these tires. We got one that's off the bead, and it's got a pretty good hole in the sidewall. So we're going to see if we can, sit, well, fix that. Usually we just do this on small engine stuff. There's like you know small tires, so we're gonna give her we're gonna give her a good amount. That should do some damage, maybe. It's a sidewall leak, so that can be helpful. That's about it. See, just went fuck and it's done. Usually there's like violence, but not today. Now we just spin it for a while to get that uh, tire slime going. And hope for the best. Coming out the sidewall, so it yeah, it's working. It's working. Well, we got everything set up. We think greased, hooked up, spins freely, tires hold air. I think we're ready to put the corn in. Got to get that oh, corn in, Kevin. Done. Yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see you tomorrow. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh, today's the day. We put in the corn in. Farmer Moot got us some corn beers. The sun's out. It's warm out. It's planting time. Oh. And we are on track. We're really gonna put the corn in today. We got a clear blue sky for once in this entire series. There's no rain on the horizon. It's a nice warm 65 out today. A little bit of wind. Perfect day to finally put the damn corn in. Let's do it. We've been playing with these chains and we figured out how the marker system works and it's really cool. And I wanted to show you guys. It all has to do with the whole lifting of the machine and those two slidey McGee's in front of you and here we go. So let's say we're uh, there's a fence line here. We're planting it heading down and we want to turn around and plant right next to that row on the way back. So on the way down, we'll have that marker down and then I'll put the middle of the tractor right on that line and it'll perfectly space all of our rows if we did all of our math right. When I get to the other end, I turn around, this cable will become taut and it'll pull that. And then when I put the planter down, We drive down the row, leave our mark over there, get to the end of the other row. We're going to turn uh, left this time.
cool is that? That's awesome. I think that's so damn cool. The old mechanical shit like this, just, I love it. Let's get some graphite in these things, do a little test run, clean up all of our discs. Wait for Ben to show up and hit the field. Thank you to one of the neighbors uh, for bringing us some of this, Ryan. Very courteous of you, we couldn't find it anywhere, so hopefully this is what we need to make it happen today. The idea here is using graphite, seed is dry, seed needs to stay dry, it's very dusty with all the stuff on the outside of it. Graphite is your lubricant for all those fingers and stuff. Well, these have been sitting for a long time. They are not very easy to turn, we found out yesterday. That's a little concerning, so we're gonna dump a bunch of graphite down in these to try to break everything up. Uh, if I had a guess, it's probably past the point of just graphite doing us anything. Probably needs to all be taken apart, cleaned up, uh, get all the corrosion off and lubed, but this is what we're going to do, so eh, heck it. All right, just drive it out the field, see what happens. That one might be a little light. But that one I was at over there, it was it was probably about two and a quarter inches of where you'd want it. It's a little shallower. Pretty yeah. uniform there, I think. That's, yeah, it's pretty damn good. <laughs> Yesterday I asked one of the neighbors who has a big farming operation in the area if they had any extra plot seed or anything and they said, oh yeah, we've got some one-year-old plot seed. Which is exactly what this is, so thank you very much to them. Um, I can't really say any names because it will literally give away our location of where we live. Uh, John, Jason, and the family, thank you very much for the old plot seed. Let's throw some of this in the planter and see if it drops seeds consistently. Rinse and repeat. A little bit. Over. You got seed on all six, Gavin. You really? Yep. Yeah, actually, not too bad. Dude, that is not bad. Not bad placement, really. You got some graphite coming out, so you're winning there. So she's, <laughs> we're, we're good to put the corn in. I think we're gonna back the truck up and fill it up. But holy shit, this is happening. We're Let's do the it. Corn in. I need a beer about this. Me too. Kevin, I'll just be kind of, I'll be behind you digging a little bit, just okay. seeing where that seat depth is. We'll try to get it at two and a quarter. Okay, I'll do about 10 feet and stop, and we'll check. Okay. And then we'll just do 10 foot, 20 foot sections until we know that we're good to okay. go.
feel that Iowa dirt. This is pretty shitty dirt for Iowa here. It's very sandy. I got one here. I'm about two and a quarter. How about you, Ben? I've been, yeah, I would say two and a quarter to two and a half. Anything, Jesse? Oh, I just found one. About two and a half for you too, it looks like. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah, and that outside row is that one that we kind of questioned. So if that's where you see it, that's perfect. Yeah. All right. Let's plant a field. I'd say. noises. Beep, beep, boop, boop. GPS signal lost. Ugh. They don't be very quick. I mean, they are pretty straight. Especially with this much slop in the wheel. Like, that does nothing. For our first time farming, a lot of this is going way better than I anticipated.
the damn corn in. We still gotta do the whole backfield, but the front field is done. So we're just gonna rinse and repeat on the back here and some bitch we did it. Two, two of the buckets are empty at least, I think. Uh-oh, I wonder how long Good. that's been like that. Okay, well, I figured it out. The chain's all bound up on this one and the chain fell off of this one. There, I think that works better now. Got plenty of corn left. That goes way further than I was anticipating it to. Our graphite did some wonders on it. Everything spins a lot easier. So we just went digging in the field. Looks like our chain fell off right away when we dropped on this last row. But Caleb, you're the farm person here. What's the worst that happens if we just replant those six? Uh, double corn. Double corn. That sounds Yay! like double good. <laughs> Why don't we do that to start with? I knew it was going too well. Yeah, there's a cotter pin missing. There's no clutch. It's a, they have a, essentially a shear pin that is a cotter pin. So, I don't have any cotter pins, but there's this random piece of wire and I got a pliers. God, I had to say this was going too well. Oh, we're just out of gas. Okay. Let's go get some gas, and then see if it works, and then replant the bad spot. <laughs> so how's farming going? It's going great. Yeah, this is actually, it works out, because I need a beer, and they're over there. I'm gonna be the only farmer that refills his tractors using race jugs. <laughs> this is VR1 racing oil and QA1 shock on his Farmall H. You know, if you didn't have the standpipe, you wouldn't have ran out of gas. Yeah, that, well, <laughs> we also would have Still been trying to disc the first 60 feet of the field. The thing has worked absolutely flawlessly. I've not had one issue since we put that on. So we're running out of gas twice. All right, we got everything looped up. We're out here in the backfield. It's time to plant the rest of it. I've got my seed monitor here to make sure that we keep planting everything just fine. Let's uh, let's get to it. Put the corn in.
tree with the damn thing taking clean off with a twig. So every tree within 50 feet of the field is getting annihilated with a chainsaw. I think that one, I pushed all of it into the hop thing last the time. Yeah, you... is becoming unhappy. Your last bit. As you can hear, we're surging pretty damn bad now. So I'm going to empty out this sediment bowl and clean these filters up and see if that does it. Uh, it's only surging at higher RPM, which means we have enough fuel to idle, just fine and dandy. But uh, up at RPM, sorry, well, it's coming in just fine, so it's after this is where our problem is. We've got literally like two passes left. Come on, you old son of a bitch, you can do it. I think we'll make it though. Yeah, all we have is just that little section. season so far is yes yes we can that was the last stripe the corn is finally in and the first clouds are starting on the horizon so we've got three days of rain coming we beat it mook we did it we beat the rain if you guys enjoyed this series make sure you subscribe because there's still plenty of work to come in fact i think we have a very tight window for liquid fertilizer and thankfully due to one of our subscribers shooting me an email I know where there's an old Haggy Series 2 sitting, completely abandoned. So we'll see you guys right here next week for another episode. Make sure you subscribe to see when that comes out. Thank you to all the neighbors who have done so much to help supply equipment, supply seed, graphite, everything we've needed to get this corn in. Thank you to Ben and Angus and all the work they've done. So without further ado, from all of us here at the Junkyard Digs Cornfield, thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. War! Corn. <laughs>